Thank you. Um, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, it's a real honor to be representing the wider Future of Tibet Organizing Committee today at this event. I think in total we're about 11 or 12 people who form the core group. And we're not any kind of formal organization. We're more a collective of dedicated individuals who are coming together to form this diverse core group, which we hope will also mirror our rich Tibetan community in exile. So we represent uh, people, Tibetans, who have lived in India, Europe, North America, and of course those who were born and grew up inside of Tibet. And just to give a bit of background, the journey of the future of Tibet uh, began in 2020. And it was Wongpo Tetong, who will be coming later, he's now uh, living in Amsterdam, and Dashin Angela, who's based in Seattle. They both were active members of the Tibetan youth movement in their formative years, and they found themselves contemplating this profound question, uh, what does the future hold for the Tibetan people when His Holiness is no longer among us? So subsequently, from those initial discussions, uh, there have been conferences about the future of Tibet. In um, April 2022 was the first one in Washington, D.C. And then around this time last year, uh, we had a successful European conference in Paris. And then earlier this year in April, there was a youth conference held in New York. So after today's one day event, we'll all be heading up to Dharamsala and then we'll have the Dharamsala conference uh, 5th to 10th of November. So diverse voices, common goals. We organizers, we don't all share the same political uh, convictions, but we firmly believe in the power of unity and the value of open and truthful dialogue. And we understand that there are so many global and political changes taking place. And we in the Tibetan freedom movement, we have to adapt and evolve to navigate, navigate any future course. So whatever we do, we have to focus on unity. We have to look to unite different Tibetan groups. And we need to create common understandings. So we feel it's important that our discussions about the future not be constrained or hindered by regional, religious, or political affiliations. And moreover, wherever possible, we feel it's really important for our discussions to be inter intergenerational and also be between Tibetans in exile and inside Tibet. So we really try to include different kinds of voices in this debate because we recognize that the more voices involved, the better, and also more enriching for our society. And so one also uh, important component about the conferences I should mention is a scenario planning workshop. And this identifies key concerns in the future and also key uncertainties in the future. And we had a sort of experimental uh, try at this uh, scenario planning <coughs> workshop in Paris, which already worked very well. And our facilitators uh, have been working really hard to ensure that the next level of the workshop in Dharamsala is as productive as possible. So I'd like to quickly mention some themes that have been identified as important for discussions. And these are themes that came up in the past conferences, and they are uh, the main one, His Holiness, reflections on the transition period to come. Uh, the second one being, what are the challenges and prospects for our democracy? And then also very important to talk about the movement of, you know, where is our in international advocacy and outreach going? And then lastly, something that has come up a lot is our individual responsibility. What can we do in our activism? What are, what are the implications for our Tibetan identity in the future? And also we uh, have talked a lot about Tibetan culture and art. And one exciting thing in Dharamsala is we have an, uh, a group of art artists uh, working together. So we have this artistic element, artistic component, and a group of artists are working to create an art piece on the topic of Tibet's future. So I'm really keen to see what comes out of this artist group. And uh, also the main reason why we're here today is we want to better understand India's role in all of this, as we've already just heard. And we are really looking to get from our Indian friends and expand your inputs. And we will take all of this with us when we go into our conference uh, next week. And the last thing I want to do is I want to quickly introduce our core members who are here uh, today, because I'd like you to know who we are. So myself, Dejan Pamba, 
Benzi Mangela Tedanga has already been introduced. He's sitting here in the front. Uh, where is Lansonga from New York? He's over there in the back. So that's Lansonga from New York. And then uh, where's Chudunla from France? She's right at the back over there. She's one of our main uh, main corporate members. And then also Tandula. Uh, can't see him right now, but yeah, you know who he is. And then also, um, I'd like to introduce Gesa Mandala, who's sitting here in the front, and he's one of our main uh, sort of artists, uh, the creative force behind our artist group. And then lastly, two facilitators for the workshop, um, Wangela over there, <laughs> Wangela's over there, and Larangla over there. So the two facilitators over there who are going to be taking our workshops to the, to the next level. So thank you, everybody. That's who we are, and I'll hand you back now. Thank you very much. Thank you.